In 1988, Ron Toomer and Aerodynamics pushed the envelope of roller coaster design with Cedar Point's announcement of Magnum XL200. Dubbed a hypercoaster, it was the first full circuit coaster to reach heights of 200 feet in the air and opened in 1989. Aerodynamics later created only three more of their own hypercoaster models, but the concept was later picked up by D.H. Morgan, Intamin, Bolliger and Mabillard, and Mock Rides, who have all built hypers of their own. And now, more than 30 years later, hypercoasters continue to be a staple of most major amusement parks. Unless you happen to be on the west coast, then you're totally screwed. Okay, I guess there's Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain. And... Desperado? Anyway, on rare occasions, a park will end up with two hypercoasters. And this is exactly what happened in 2020 when Kings Island opened their second B&M Hyper Coaster model, Orion. It was a shocking move. Kings Island was already home to Diamondback, one of the best B&M Hypers in the country. Taking a page out of Canada's Wonderland's playbook after they opened back-to-back -back big boy B&Ms with Behemoth in 2008 and then Leviathan just four years later. And also Carowinds with Intimidator in 2010 and then Fury 325 in 2015. Would Diamondback be topped by a taller and faster version of the same B&M model 12 years later? In this video, we pit Orion and Diamondback against each other to finally answer a burning question. What is the best hypercoaster at Kings Island? In this corner, the Challenger, standing at a height of 287 feet and weighing in at nearly 5 million pounds, Orion! And in this corner, the defending champion, standing at a height of 230 feet and weighing in at more than 3 million pounds, Diamondback! But first, a bit of history. In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone, the Great Depression. No, I'm talking about history of Diamondback and Orion, the topic of this video. Construction of Diamondback started in October 2007 with the draining of Swan Lake and the removal of a tree. Yes, folks, one tree gets removed and all the coaster nerds start speculating about a new coaster. In this rare instance, they happen to be correct. Swan Lake was reduced in size, given a concrete bottom, and became the location of Diamondback's splashdown finale. It wouldn't be until August of the following year when Kings Island made Diamondback official with an announcement. But with track already on site and footers poured, us enthusiasts knew what was up. Diamondback opened in April 2009, and at a cost of $22 million, it was the largest investment in the park's history up until that point. To make way for Orion, Kings Island removed what was hands down the best coaster in the world, themed to a combusting bird of prey. Somehow, there were coaster enthusiasts upset about a Vacoma being demolished. Anyway, after Firehawk's closure in October 2018, the park didn't waste any time in clearing land for Orion. It was announced in August 2019, opened in July 2020, and set the record for most expensive coaster in the park at $30 million. We first rode Diamondback in 2016, and it instantly became one of our favorite B&M hypercoasters. So when we returned to Kings Island in 2020 to ride Orion, we were curious if it was going to dethrone Diamondback from that position. Since Orion is taller, longer, and faster, it doesn't make sense to compare and contrast their individual stats. So to make this a fair fight, we will score Orion and Diamondback across these nine categories. Name, theming, Location, Trains, First Drop, Layout, Prime Ride Time, Air Time, and finally, Pacing. Round 1. Fight! As Shakespeare famously wrote, What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. In other words, a name is rather irrelevant. Most of the time it isn't going to make or break a coaster. But we've got to start somewhere with this video. Orion. 
The name comes from a famous group of stars. James Hetfield, Lars Ulrich, Kirk Hammett, and Cliff Burton of Metallica, who wrote one of the best songs ever, Orion. At least Lars didn't go after Cedar Fair for using the name. Diamondback Why a theme park in Ohio named it after a Major League Baseball team in Arizona is beyond us, especially given their mediocre record in 2008 when they finished two games over 500. Perhaps it was their way of knocking it out of the park? Yes, we're using that joke again. Being a huge Metallica fan, Orion is the clear winner in the name category. Not to mention, Diamondback is not even an original name since Frontier City already had been using it on their Aero Shuttle Loop since 1994. Therefore, Orion has been awarded one meaningless point and is off to an early lead. Which takes us to the theming of the two coasters. Round 2. Fight! Orion is easily the best themed coaster of the Cedar Fair era at Kings Island, unless you're a fan of Sheds. But we feel they really went above and beyond with this one. Not only did they give the guests something to experience while waiting in line, but they extended the theme and storyline to the reimagined land Orion sits in, known as Area 72. Diamondback, on the other hand, has rather minimal theming aside from a nice looking entrance sign and a westernish looking station. It's by no means bad, but Orion is the clear winner here in the theming department, and now has a commanding 2 to nothing advantage over Diamondback. Fight! The number one rule in real estate is location, location, location. The same can be said for roller coasters. Probably. As previously noted, Area 72 was created for Orion behind the racer after Firehawk's removal and Diamondback is the centerpiece of the Rivertown area of Kings Island. Both coasters are an out and back design that extend beyond the back of the park, pass by some beautiful trees, and then turn around before heading back to the respective areas inside the park. Almost all of Orion's layout is in the backstage areas of the park, while about one third of Diamondback's layout goes over and around the midways in Rivertown. Orion received the point for theming, but Diamondback edges it out based on pure location, especially with its epic splashdown in the repurposed Swan Lake. And with that point, Diamondback is now on the board. Fight! Next up are the trains. Both coasters feature trains that hold a maximum of 32 riders, and both have the much-loved clamshell-style restraints that are perfect for the oversized coaster enthusiast. The trains on Orion have the traditional B&M layout of four across, However, Diamondback is a bit different with its unconventional seating arrangement. The rows have staggered seating two across, so every other row is spread apart, which is perfect for married couples, relationships on the cusp of a disaster, and parents who don't care about their children. The trains are also longer, which is a plus for airtime enthusiasts. The clear winner here is Diamondback, which clawed all the way back, tying the score at two all. Fight! Arguably, the best part of a hypercoaster is the first drop. Raging Bull, Fury 325, Nitro, you name it. B&M really knows how to start off their rides with a bang. Diamondback is 230 feet tall and its first drop is 215 feet, featuring a slight curve to the right at the bottom. While Orion is 287 feet tall, its first drop extends into a ditch, making it a total of 300 feet. Diamondback's drop is excellent, but Orion's is epic. Its lift train speed is faster, and once you start dropping, you really do feel like you're falling forever as you're gaining speed to max out at 91 miles per hour. Orion is the obvious winner here and is again ahead, now 3 to 2. Fight! After their respective first drops, each coaster features wildly different layouts and elements. After Diamondback's first drop, a slight right turn sends riders up a 193-foot ejector airtime-filled Camelback Hill and then a slight turn to the left, followed by another Camelback Hill and an overbank turn to the left, and another Camelback Hill. A 270-degree upward helix to the left leads into the mid-course brake run. Diamondback finishes with three more airtime hills, all over 100 feet high, a flat helix to the right, and the splashdown before hitting its final brakes. 
Orion couldn't be more different. After its 85 degree first drop, B&M changed up their formula and utilized a high speed wave turn 174 feet off the ground in lieu of a camelback hill filled with airtime. Orion then steals an element from its Cedar Fair cousin coaster, Fury 325, the Treble Club. But it does it in reverse, where you dive down the curving section instead of climbing up. The reverse treble clef is also taller than the preceding wave turn, at 202 feet tall. An injector airtime filled speed hill and camelback hill will follow. And then, into what many unofficially call Orion's Belt, a very intense helix that climbs both up and drops down while this track is still turning. There's two more decent airtime moments before Orion ends with its final brake run high off the ground. Both layouts truly are masterpieces, but Orion wins in this category with its highly unique elements, especially for B&M. It now leads 4-2. Fight! Our good friend Airtime Thrills has an awesome video series on ranking coasters by their prime ride time. And because Orion and Diamondback have similar track lengths, we thought this was a good category to measure. Prime ride time is defined as the total duration between when the train picks up speed off the lift hill and when it hits the final brakes, subtracting the time where the train slows down through any mid-course brakes, which are only found on Diamondback. Orion, at 5,321 feet in length, is only 39 feet longer than Diamondback. So, with its top speed of 91 miles per hour, it has a longer total track length, but a shorter prime ride time than Diamondback. Approximately 52 seconds a total prime ride time between lift and final brakes, versus Diamondback's prime ride time of approximately 66 seconds. If you ask the ladies, ride time will always beat length. Also, one ride ends with a splashdown climax and the other doesn't. Just saying. Point, Diamondback. Fight! And just like first drops, hypercoasters are also all about airtime. Orion might have the single best airtime moment at Speed Hill, but the coaster is more focused on speed and turns, which isn't a bad thing. There wouldn't be a point to have two B&M hypers focused on the same thing. Diamondback, however, is airtime forward with its relentless airtime moments from beginning to end. After the first drop on Diamondback, it's airtime hill after airtime hill, which is likely helped by its longer trains. It's one of our favorite series of airtime moments on any coaster. The winner in the airtime category goes to Diamondback. The score is again tied, now 4-4. Which takes us to the final and tie-breaking category, pacing. Final round, fight! And no, I'm not talking about walking back and forth as you check for the length of the line in order to decide if it's worth waiting for. ERT sure has spoiled us. Anyway, what is pacing? We look at a couple things. How fast a coaster goes through its layout, as well as how well each element flows together. To cover that first one, we head back to our good friend Airtime Thrills to do the math for us. He calculated that Diamondback travels approximately 64.6 .6 feet per second, while Orion blazes through its course at approximately 81.9 feet per second. Orion also strings its elements together in a much better fashion with a nicely balanced combination of turns and airtime hills and no mid-course breaks to break up the pacing. Diamondback not only has a mid-course break run, but it tends to crawl through parts of its layout. Point Orion, which has now broken the tie to seal the victory for Orion is the best hypercoaster at Kings Island. But wait a second. Remember when we ranked the names and awarded Orion one meaningless point simply because we love Metallica and hate the Arizona Diamondbacks? We weren't exactly being fair, and did say the point was meaningless. Which leaves us with a tie. Thank you for watching. Hey there, welcome back. We weren't going to leave you hanging. There needs to be a winner. But how to settle this? Hmm. Okay, for this entire video, I'm sure many of you have been saying, but Orion isn't a hyper, it's a giga! But is it? According to Bolliger and Mabillard, both Diamondback and Orion are hyper coaster models. It says so right here on their website. However, this doesn't help solve our issue of having a tie. Let's dig a little deeper. 
When Millennium Forest opened at Cedar Point in the year 2000, the term Gigacoaster was arbitrarily created. Sort of like Hypercoaster was arbitrarily created for Magnum XL200, also at Cedar Point. Millennium Forest stands at 305 feet tall with a 300 foot drop. And since then, every other Gigacoaster built stood at a height of at least 300 feet with a drop of also 300 feet or more. But then came Orion with its 287 foot height and 300 foot drop, which put Orion in a bit of a gray area. To clear things up, we turn to the opinion of the almighty coaster enthusiast, which is the only opinion that really matters, right? Right? And according to coaster enthusiast, roller coasters between 200 and 299 feet tall, or have a drop height between 200 and 299 feet, are considered a hypercoaster, despite the coaster's manufacturer or model. And we think that same logic should apply to Giga Coasters as well. Orion, as mentioned, is in a weird position where it's not 300 feet tall, but its first drop is. Therefore, Orion is a Giga, not a Hyper. And even Kings Island agrees. According to their official website, Orion is one of seven Giga Coasters in the world, a class of roller coasters having a height or drop of 300 to 399 feet. Well, there you have it. By default, Diamondback is the best hypercoaster at Kings Island. While our entire scoring system has been rendered pointless, no pun intended, the is Orion a Giga Coaster debate amongst coaster enthusiasts is also stupid and pointless. Both Orion and Diamondback are phenomenal coasters that everyone should aim to ride at least once in their lifetime. But now we look to our viewers for their opinions. Which coaster is better, Orion or Diamondback? Leave a comment down below to which coaster you choose and why. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more awesome coaster content. Also, check out some of our other popular videos which will be linked at the end of this one. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.